lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm bringing you an eighth of the grade for micro histories slash history books about leisure slash hobbies. The reason why we're doing this is this is actually a prompt for the history challenge but I wanted to kind of do a mini video on it on its own right because I do think it's one where people are potentially going to struggle a little bit more and I do have a great list of micro histories here and often if you're talking about like the history of a particular leisure activity it kind of counts as micro history in its own right. So what I mean by micro history, I mean a book or kind of content of some sort, podcast, whatever, that is focused on a very particular area of history, normally an item of some sort, and then looks at how it has been kind of interacted with and understood across the ages. And that will make more sense as we jump into it. The first one that I wanted to talk about is from Mark Kalansky, who is definitely the king of micro histories. He has quite a few, but the one that I have read is Cod, and this is the biography of a fish that changed the world. It is looking at basically the various ways that cod has had impacts both socially and kind of economically on a variety of different societies across the world. Um, goes slightly more to modern day and talks about kind of fisheries now and the impacts that overfishing has had on lifestyles but then also talks about cod as being sort of a major economic driver of various different areas and like I say it's really important socially to lots of different cultures and societies. This is really cool as well because it does mention some fantastic recipes in the back that I think when I read it I thought about actually trying to make some of them and then I I totally forgot to so this might be the inspiration to actually look at doing that but like I said Mark Kalansky is really known for his micro histories he has one on salt and one on paper as well his writing style is really light and fun kind of each chapter is focused on a different aspect of cod and it's a really enjoyable way of getting sort of a mishmash of different kinds of histories from all across the world specifically kind of tied together on this one idea one that I've definitely mentioned before because it's one of my all-time favorite non-fiction books and that is It's All a Game by Tristan Donovan this is a short history of board games and it goes back to some of the earliest examples of board games that we have all the way through to modern day and how sort of um, things like the invention of very cheap plastics and stuff has completely changed how we're interacting with board games today and sort of what they reflect on society. Each chapter is focused on a different either board game or grouping of board games. So you have one on chess, you have one on backgammon, you have one on Monopoly, and it's really looking at sort of how did it form, what impacts does it have, and what do our leisure activities say about society and kind of the values that the society holds important. It's super light, super easy read, really entertaining, and if you're a fan of board games, you'll definitely love it. You'll recognise a lot of these classics. But if you're just a fan of kind of um, more relaxed history where less is at stake, I think you'll also really enjoy this one as well. Um, Andy read it recently and really enjoyed it too. It's just such a great book. One that I didn't actually enjoy that much but I know that I am definitely in a minority for is Mudlarking or Mudlark, can't remember if it has an ing on the end, by Lara Maiklum, I believe. Covers here, should have researched this. This is the sixth video I'm filming in a row so we're, we're over this now. Um, Mudlarking is the activity of walking along the River Thames in particular and then looking for various items that have been washed up over the years and trying to kind of pick them out of the mud as the tide changes. So you get to kind of go along these walks with Lara and kind of see the various items. You get to learn a little bit of history about the items and then sort of how she sort of feels about them and how she feels about the mudlarking community in general. Um, it's great because it's both a micro history in the sense of it's focused on all sorts of lots of different little aspects of history but it's also a lovely like um, hobby that is connected to history so I think it works with the prompt in a lot of different ways. I can't really put my finger on why I didn't overly enjoy this book. It was a three star read for me, there was just something about the authorial voice that didn't work but it should have been an absolute slam dunk because it ticks all of the boxes that I would normally really enjoy and I can't articulate why I didn't enjoy it more than just I didn't really like her writing sorry. So because of that I still do recommend this book quite frequently because I do think that it's a good book in its own right and many other people have enjoyed it. It's such a fun way of looking at the history of London in general and kind of how do these items end up there and how each item tells a story. So yeah very interesting one even if it didn't quite work for me. Going back to more conventional micro histories we have The Golden Thread How Fabric Changed History by Cassia St. Clair. This similar to Cod is looking at fabric and looking at different kinds of fabrics. Each chapter is focused on a different fabric and what it means sort of in history. Uh, we do bounce all over the world which is very cool and all across time. We have Egyptian cotton, we have wool being important for um, I think it was the Elizabethans or the Tudors. We have silk in ancient China and then the silk roads. We have going more to modern day we've got things about like harnessing spider silk and suits suitable for space it's really really cool and really detailed I love fabric craft 
photographs so this kind of held more of a special place in my heart but I do think it's fascinating um, just kind of more generally for many people and it's also really interesting because Cassia Sinclair talks about the importance of fabric historically but how that hasn't really been acknowledged more recently because it just doesn't kind of get preserved in the same way that like metals and sort of woods and woodworking does and it's also women's work most often which means it does often get overlooked so there is kind of a, a kind of layer of sort of history of feminism and kind of history of women um, and kind of women's place within the society threaded through this as well pun not intended so a great one like with some of these Cassia Sinclair does oversimplify a few areas in history and because of that she does misrepresent a few bits dependent on what particular theory you subscribe to so that has got her some kind of negative reviews in the past I personally really enjoyed her writing and I had no problem with anything that she said and I do think that um history is not as cut and dry as some people like to make it out to be so I think that there are areas where I don't think she gets anything overly factually wrong she just potentially oversimplifies areas which are slightly more nuanced or slightly more controversial than she's given credit for similar to how Yvelle Noah Harari does to be honest the next one I want to talk about is Fabulosa oh it just kicked the camera sorry uh, this is by Paul Baker and is a history of Polari which was a Britain's secret gay language so this is looking at how Polari formed it was used in kind of the 1920s 40s ish onwards and how it was developed as a secret language the reason why it needed to be secret and then how it became more mainstream as it sort of featured in pop culture and where it kind of um, sits within the gay community and sort of the LGBTQ plus community in general today um, it's really great if you're looking for kind of history of a social movement because it does naturally talk about the queer community and sort of the various um, ways that they've been discriminated against but then also kind of the progress that's been made and really tracks that history quite nicely um, but it was also focused in on this particular language this was actually Paul Baker's PhD originally which he's now kind of reworked and rewritten to make more accessible I think it's fantastic he's hilarious it's so many really cool pop culture references I blitz through this book so quickly more people need to read it and he's also featured on a few different podcasts where he talks about Polari, so do go check that out as well. And there's some really great content about Polari on YouTube of people who still kind of speak it a bit, so do feel free to check that out too. You would be amazed how much British slang actually has Polari in it. The next one I want to talk about is Rainbow Dust by Peter Maron. This is Three Centuries of Delight in British Butterflies, and it's looking at the history of British butterfly collecting as well as history of the British butterfly, that is very hard to say quickly, and how climate change has completely changed how, um, sort of, what space the British butterfly has kind of left over in our country anymore um it's really interesting because butterfly collecting is something that and butterfly breeding was something that was considered more acceptable for women to be able to do so it does talk a little bit like, about like women in science especially in the 1800s and kind of um the role that some of the mainly in the obviously upper classes and kind of upper society um had how much they could get engaged with this as a form of science. Um, I read this quite a while ago but I do credit this book as being one of the earliest examples of nature writing that I read that really sparked my love for the genre so I definitely enjoyed it and it does talk about, Peter Moran does talk about kind of his own experiences of butterfly collecting and how that was a really popular craze um, when he was a kid so you do get kind of that additional layer of hobbies talked about there. So a good one if you're a fan of nature writing as well and you want to combine more kind of history and nature together, really fun book. Also to cover stunning. The next one I want to talk about is definitely a micro history and that is Sea Shaken Houses by Tom Nankalas. This is a lighthouse history from Eddystone to Fastnet and it's specifically looking at rock lighthouses which are lighthouses that are not on the cliff as such or connected to the mainland but are rather on a collection of rocks actually out at sea. It looks at each individual chapter is a different lighthouse and they look at how is it built, the advancements in kind of technology for how they built it, um, is it still standing, who lived there and what were their lives like. It is a little repetitive in places. I do recommend the audiobook and treating it more like a collection of essays that you maybe dip in and out of, but it's incredibly atmospheric and really interesting looking at how important lighthouses and because of that, the sea trade and sort of um, shipping lanes and things like that have been to the UK in general and sort of the history of how we've developed when it comes to sort of engineering and architecture over the years as well. So a little bit more niche, um, one that I would recommend, yeah, taking 
bit by bit i wouldn't do a deep dive in this and just read this i'd read it alongside something else because otherwise it does get quite repetitive um but still really interesting the final one i want to talk about is slugfest and i can't remember who wrote this i'm very sorry it will be here and this is looking at the kind of 50 plus year grudge match between marvel and dc so we're talking about kind of a history of comic books now this is going to be a lot more recent history um rather than going kind of way way back but i think that it still counts and like modern history is still definitely relevant in the history challenge um but it is looking at kind of the um origins of marvel and dc how various characters who we know and love now have sort of formed and basically who has been on top um it's really great because it is a history of comic books and you do get to kind of learn more about comic books and superheroes in general and sort of the place that the superhero has held within pop culture and then also these kind of big grudge matches between these kind of two um sort of giants and then all of the kind of sub um like sub companies that kind of formed of people breaking away i read this quite a while ago but i really enjoyed it i listened to it on audiobook and i blitzed it in like two or three days because i was just having such a good time and it definitely talks about more of the kind of modern marvel cinematic universe and sort of how that has revamped how superheroes are kind of being considered so it does bring it into a modern day context it was written a couple of years ago now i think i read this three years ago so it won't necessarily cover some of the more recent stuff that they've been doing but still really interesting and definitely great if you want kind of a micro history and history of a hobby so there you have it these are eight micro histories that i think are pretty cool uh, do let me know if you're gonna pick any of them for the history challenge or if you have some other micro histories out there that you think are great i definitely do want to read another one from mark kalansky sometime soon i'm thinking paper but I don't know when. So I've now filmed six videos all about history and I'm definitely losing my voice. Uh, but this was the only way I could guarantee getting this content done to make sure that I could have it coming out before the history challenge because my work rotor gets absolutely manic very soon. So I wanted to smash these out. So I'm impressed with myself. Go check out all the other ones. There is so much content now. Have a wonderful reading week and I will chat to you soon. Bye.